We're going to look at how to draw tiny faces to go with our last video about drawing tiny figures. Hi, my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. One reason to do this is because it's a great exercise. It'll push you to find only the most important information in the face to capture. And you're going to need to leave out anything unnecessary in order to draw that small. And that's a really great skill to develop. Like the small figures, this was pretty tricky and this exercise was quite uncomfortable for us, presented a lot of challenges and so that means it was good practice. So we're not talking about getting special tiny drawing and painting materials and a magnifying glass or something and then painstakingly doing a tiny face that way. Because then you'd be able to include details, you know? Instead, we're looking at how to draw faces on a small scale with our normal drawing materials, because that's going to push us to simplify. We also aren't talking about tiny portraits where the aim is a likeness. When you try this exercise, the aim, at least for us, it was to achieve a natural looking face that gets at the expression and direction of the model's face, maybe some of the character, but it doesn't have to look just like them. So we're going to need the essentials, right? The eyes, the eyebrows, a nose and a mouth. And for this uh, exercise, let's include the rest of the head, the ears and the hair. We'll add the neck and shoulders. So we've got the connection to the rest of the figure. For some reason, we found profiles much easier. So why don't we start there? We mainly just want a little line for the upper eyelashes which from the side, it often appears quite straight, like a straight little line. And then you can add the pupil if that's visible, maybe the lower edge of the eye if you want to. It's the upper eyelashes where you want stronger marks. The lower edge is usually better off quite light. The eyebrows can be strong or not depending on the model. And then it's good to show a little bit of the shape of the eyeball under the upper eyelid with some tone or even a line. You might be tempted to have the eye too far forward on the profile. People often seem to draw the eyes like they're on the front of the face, you know, like stuck to the front of the face. I did that for a long time. The sockets usually mean they're further back into the head than we realize. For the nose, the important thing to get right is the line for the bottom edge of the nose. Often people will draw this, and when I say people, I mean me not so long ago, will draw this as if the nose sits right on the front edge of the face, but these edges are gonna be set back a little bit. If you have space and things aren't gonna get messy, you may like to indicate the shade under the lower lip and on the upper lip. From the front or a three quarter angle, it's pretty much the same. We're most interested in the upper eyelash line the bottom edge of the nose and the line of the mouth. You can choose if you want to include lines running down the length of the nose. And if you do, try to keep them light or indicate that shape with shade and, and leave out the lines. It's usually the bottom of the nose, the tip of the nose and the nostrils and all that, where usually the bolder marks are needed. You can also choose if you want to add tone to show the form of the face, the shade under the lower lip, around the cheekbones, in the eye sockets and all that. So before going on, I wanted to ask you guys a quick question. You know, sometimes it's really helpful to share drawings and get feedback from other artists learning to draw, ask questions and all that kind of stuff. So we're thinking about starting a Facebook group, but I wanted to check if a lot of people would want to actively participate in a group like that, because you need quite a few people to make something like that work. Let me know in the comments below or on our Facebook page or through Instagram. There's a few different ways to approach the drawing. You might like to start with the facial features and then build up the whole head from there um, and then the figure from there. I was focusing on faces and so in this exercise, that's how I did it. You could also draw the structure of the figure, uh, the basic shape of the head, and then start to add the face to that uh, and like Mako is doing here. Some people like to draw the structure of the torso, the figure, and then start to add just the jawline and the chin, and then build up a light outline of the face from there, kind of moving upwards. Now, we aren't going to say that there's a right and a wrong order, but we reckon there are pros and cons to each one. So if you really need to get the head or the whole figure to a specific size, so for example, if you want to draw a few figures together and you want them all to be in proportion to each other, 
then it might be harder to start by drawing the faces. You know, like judging the relative distances between the features and then understanding how that's gonna translate to the size of the whole figure is quite hard. Like here, I didn't really know exactly how big the figure would turn out in the end when I started to draw the face. If you do have the head uh, shape there and kind of the size all mapped out, and now you're gonna start to add features, be careful to not try to force the features to fit your pre-existing face shape. Sometimes I would try to stretch out the face to fit the shape that I'd already drawn at the start. Instead, just keep initial layers light and be ready to modify the shape that you've got in place. Because as you build up the information in the face, you've got more information to improve the face shape with. And you know, Mako hasn't actually had to do that too much here, but you know, she's really good at this sort of thing. You'll also want to take a step back and look at the whole figure to ensure everything's still in proportion if you've already drawn the rest of the figure. And the jawline's going to curl up to the ear and then you'll also want to look for the line going from the eyebrows around to the tops of the ears. And we're always saying to draw the hair as a shape or a set of shapes, simplifying that shape or set of shapes as much as possible. And that's more important than ever at this scale. Now the tricky thing about all this is that just a small mistake can have a big impact. Even if it's just a line that goes a millimeter long or a mouth that's half a millimeter too far from the nose. So we're not using a lot of lines, but the lines that we do use are quite high impact, quite kind of delicate. And that might tempt you to become quite controlling and tentative. But even at this scale, tentative isn't gonna look good. Make your good observations, consider the marks you're gonna make quite well. But once you've decided, stay decisive and be bold when you make your marks. You know, and one nice thing about these small drawings is you can just, they're so small and so quick, you can just do tons and tons of them. It really doesn't matter. This is an exercise. If loads of them go wrong, it doesn't matter. Just get that quantity of practice in. Now we made this point in the last video too, but it's really important. Hopefully drawing small is an unusual experience for you. That's why it's an exercise. Sometimes people starting out with life drawings are intimidated by drawing big like this, uh, but drawing small is actually much harder. And you know, years ago, the first thing that Mako told me, the first big thing that she pushed me to do was just draw bigger, draw bigger, draw bigger, draw bigger. So hopefully you're drawing quite large. If you've got an A4 pad, you're at least filling that up Hopefully you're on to A3 or A2 scale, getting big expressive movements of your arm in there. And then doing this exercise is unusual. Drawing this small is an unusual special challenge. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for more. We've got lots of good stuff coming up and let us know if you'd be interested in that Facebook group below. Thanks.